Hello, Chris Richter here again. Welcome back. Now, I'm answering a question here that someone had about Sketchfab. Now, you may remember I did a short video on how to control Sketchfab using JavaScript and how you can put that into an LMS as well. If you're not sure what that's all about, jump back and have a look at that video. I'll put a link down the bottom. Somebody asked me a question and the question was, is it possible to have two objects and show only the clicked mesh? Example, two mesh boxes, one and two, with two buttons. Once you click the first button, the first mesh box to appear. When you click the second button, the first mesh to disappear and the second mesh to appear. Absolutely, you can do it. Uh, very easy, let me show you how you go about doing that. So first of all, in our code, and I'm doing this in JS Fiddle, and I'm using an example you know, called Lazy Bags by NCAP. I'll put a link to this model down the bottom as well for you. So please uh, jump on and check those out because that's a, a really cool image. So you can see there the animation flips around. You can see the back of all the packets as well. Now, what I've done is I've created quite a few buttons. One of them is to hide packet one, show packet two. So if you click that button, it'll hide this first mesh and leave the second one there. If we switch over now, it's hiding packet two, hiding packet two, showing packet one. Now, so you can see that that's the whole mesh has disappeared. We can also hide both one and two and show both one and two in whatever order we want to do. That's what it does. Now the code for it. So we've gone and grabbed our Sketchfab API, which is what we need to control Sketchfab. Ignore the CSS rules, they're just in there. Then we've got a container uh, with just some HTML. In fact, we don't need all that. Now I'll put a link to uh, this HTML for you down the bottom so that you can grab a copy of this. It'll be in GitHub for you. Now we have our iframe here. Uh, that particular iframe is the one where we load the model into. Then we jump straight into our JavaScript. There's a little bit of information there about what this is all about. But what I do is I grab the iframe for our model. I grab the model and the model ID. And that model ID came from the ID for this uh, Lays Bags model. And I've just called it chip packets. And we've got a few variables and things there that you can, some of those you don't actually even need. So we'll get rid of that one because that was for a, the previous demo that I showed you before. Then we go into loading the model, which we do when the model is loaded successfully. We set our all materials because we need access to all the materials to know what's what. Then comes the custom bit that I've added, which is get element by ID model button one, model button two, model button three, model button four. In each of those buttons, which are these buttons down here, I have added in if they click model button one, which is hide packet one, show packet two, I've hidden the Lay's Flaming Hot, which is this one, and I'm showing the Chili Limon and sending the uh, API to it as well to the function. So that's buttons one, two, three, and four. Buttons one, two, three, and four. There's all our functions for those. If we jump down a bit further, this is where we grab all of the materials. And again, if you've watched the other video, you will remember all of this. And you can see we've got all the materials listed there. The function to grab all the materials and add them into the page. If I go down a bit further, you can see here I've got console, console log materials. Now the reason I did this is because in the console down here, I needed to find out how this model is structured. So this is the object or an array showing us all of the objects that are in there and, and what their uh, layers are called. So the layer names are layers originals. So that would be this one here, I'm assuming the classic. Would be Lays Originals, yeah, that one there. Go down to the next channel, and we've got the Flaming Hot, which is the one we used. So that's the Flaming Hot layer there. What we've done is, hide material Lays Flaming Hot. That calls a function down the bottom that I've added in called hide material, where we grab the material name and the API. What we then do is we go and find all materials, which is this array down here. We need to get the material by name. So I've created a separate function there to find out, based on the name, find out what the ID is. And we're not talking about this ID here. We're actually talking about the uh, whereabouts in the array this object sits. So that's a little function just here, get material by name. So it just quickly runs through all the materials and finds the matching material name and returns just that material. Back to... back to our hide or show material function. So we've now got a material that we want to update. What we then do is we say to the material, make sure you enable the opacity function. So channels opacity enabled is true. Then we also want to set the factor to zero, which is hidden, because we're hiding material here. 
and then we basically do the update so run using the api there we say api set material to update and that's what does the update so that's that's all there is to it and down here is the html for the buttons so you can see we've got the model button one two three and model button four and hopefully that may complete sense to you but it's it's quite simple the buttons down the bottom we set a document get element at event listener so when someone clicks on the button it hides one shows the other or in this case it hides both of those or shows both of those as well so that's the easiest way to do that hope that's been helpful to you please any questions let me know love to help you out and i am chris richter i'll talk to you again soon actually if you do want a full course on all of this spending quite a bit of time on sketchfab and how it all works let me know if uh, if enough people are interested i'm sure i can put together a whole course on uh, an in-depth training on how to use sketchfab and all the javascript that goes with it but i'll talk to you again soon